Hey everyone, I wanted to talk for a second about the straw equilibrium lab. Um, first thing, Mr. C and I are um, grading these very generously, so really just looking for your effort. Uh, <clears throat> the reason being, everyone kind of had different available items at their house, whether it was cups, measuring cups, um, different size cups. Um, I'm guessing you didn't have graduated cylinders, but straws, different size straws, right? Um, then. The other piece is you are deciding how to measure things. Some of you were creative and put rulers up, um, right? But all of the, the numbers are, are kind of um, hard to, to decipher on, I, on our end because everyone was measuring a little different. So we are going to grade these generously, but that doesn't mean you still don't need to understand the main ideas of this lab. Okay, I, disclaimer here, I 100% made up this data. Um, I've done this lab in the past with graduated cylinders and straws um, at Legend, but I didn't have access to that data with me. It's at school. Um, so I just kind of made these numbers up as an example. So I'm talking milliliters here. So I started with 50 in my reactants, which I'm going to call beaker A. And then my product is B. So I started with 50 in my reactants and no product and then I used a, a two different straws um, and I took I put the straw in this 50 and I put the straw in this zero and transferred and then I do and so again nothing would have been transferred here that's fine then we do the same thing I put a straw I put a straw and I transfer so some from here goes here some from here goes here and I keep doing that until I got three in a row roughly that we had these flat lines at equilibrium okay so my first thing is I have to write a balanced equation. So the way we do that is we look at how much they've changed. So for reactants, which are blue, this is A, this is B. A went from 50 to 35. So that is a difference of 15. B went from 0 to 15. So that is a difference of 15. Sorry, this is me showing like it goes from there to there. Right, So they're both changing at the same rate. That tells me that I use the same size straws. Right, Some of you, though, had a variety. Maybe you used a big cup and a small cup. Um, so I'm going to use the fact that they changed the same amount to write my equation, which is A goes to B and B goes to A. Right, Because we are giving some from A to B, reactants to products, but we are also giving some from B to A throughout this process. Um, if, let's say for example, I got something like this, let's just pretend that the difference here was 30 and this difference was still 15. Then my equation would have been 2A to B because A changed twice as much. So this might have been your first challenge in figuring this out and you may not have have had perfect nice whole numbers that's okay do your best to kind of estimate like how many times bigger was a or how many times bigger was b um, again i made it nice and easy that they were exactly the same a to b so now let's write the k expression so i'm going to stick with mine a to b and so for my k expression k e q or we could say k c that's fine is equal to or just capital k the concentration of the products which we are representing with the volume divided by the concentration of the reactants. If yours was like this, it would be the concentration of the product over the concentration of the reactant squared because of that two. Okay, but again, I'm not doing this one. I'm just focusing on my reaction here. And one, just note, it's totally okay if yours, depending on the size of the different containers you use, if yours was like 6A makes B. That's fine, then you would just have this to the 6. So don't panic if yours is much, much bigger than mine where it's 1 to 1. I, again, I made up my numbers. Okay, so the next piece is we have to solve for K. So K occurs when we are at equilibrium, which is this flat line section here. And the way we solve for K at this point in time is we take K. Oops, let's try that again. K is equal to... I'm going to take A at equilibrium, which is, I know it fluctuates a little bit, but it's most steady at 35. So I'm going to take 35 over, and then over here for my reactants, we were at 15. And I don't need to square any of those because of my K expression. So when I take 35 divided by 15, I get K is equal to 2.33. And just a reminder, because K is bigger than 1, that means the products are favored at equilibrium.
and I'm going to call this K1 because it's our first equilibrium. I'm also able to solve for Q, and where we solve for Q is right at the beginning of the reaction. So my Q1 is still going to be B over A, same equation, and so A was started at 50, B started at 0, 0 divided by 50 is 0. So if we look, Q is 0, K is 2.3, that means Q is less than K, so what way are we going to shift? The reaction is going to shift right. So did we see that happen? Did we mostly move towards the products? Yes, we used up the reactants and we made the products for this first comparison. So the next thing, and this was a little confusing for some of us, we had to do a stress. So we had to take, we were at 35 for our reactants and 15 for our products. We had to pour one third of the reactants down the drain. So I was at 35, I poured out until I was at about 20. So you can see the graph just drops and now we're at 20, okay? Um, the instruction said to make the transfer number the same, so eight to eight. So here was the end of my equilibrium, here's the stress. I now have 20 of my reactants and still 15 of my products. And now we do the same process um, as before. So I continued, there's my stress, I continued my transfer until A was not changing, B was not changing. Um, and so now let's do the same thing. Remember for my particular reaction, Q is equal to B over A and K is equal to b over a so it's always the same equation it's just the numbers that we plug in so let's do q first q is going to happen right at the stress so q is equal to we had this is a this is b so b over a we had 15 over 20 0 0.75 now let's do my equilibrium right here right flat line so we're going to use those numbers k is equal to b was at 10 a was at 25 0 0.4 so if we look in this situation q is bigger than k and when q is bigger than k the reaction is going to shift to the left did we see that happen did we see my reactants increase yep they went bigger and my products decrease yep that got smaller um, additionally think of Le Chatelier's principle right here's my reaction if I increase or if I decrease the amount of reactants which we did we poured out the reactants the re the overall reaction is going to shift to the side that we reduce the amount or the um, amount of reactants so we lowered how much reactants we have that's going to cause the reaction to overcompensate and shift left okay um Ideally, this K should be the same as before, and I believe before it was 2.33. Obviously, I made up my own numbers. You were making up your own measuring system with rulers and whatever creative thing you could come up with. So don't panic if your K is not exactly the same for each equilibrium, but the idea is that the ratio of this K here, the ratio of product reactants to products should be equivalent to the ratio of this. Obviously, that is not the case here, but again, I made up these numbers, it's, so don't panic if yours is not either. So the next stress, we had to add one, one cup of water to the products. So if you look right here, right, this was my equilibrium. I added a bunch, a one cup of water to the products, so it shot right up. So I went from essentially 25 reactants, 10 products, to 25 reactants, 35 products. So then I continued my process. So don't forget, we're going to call this Q3 is still B over A. K3 is still B over A. Notice I use the same thing every time. Unless you're switching cups and straws mid-experiment, it's still the same equation. So let's solve for Q. We're going to solve for Q here and here. So Q3 is equal to, this is A, this is B, this is A, B. So right here, that's my Q numbers. So I'm going to take 35 over 25, 1.4. Same thing for K, we solve for K at the equilibrium when we're flat. So 
So we are going to take these numbers, 21 over 39, 0, there we go, 0 0.54. So in this case, Q is bigger than K, which means we are going to shift left. And let's look at our reaction again, Le Chatelier's, A to B. If I increase the amount of product, we're going to shift away from that to overcompensate, so that confirms we would shift left. All right, last one. Pour a large amount of water from the fuller container to the other one. So um, my fuller container, in this case, this is A, this is B. So in this case, once I was at my uh, third equilibrium, the fuller container was A, so I poured a bunch of it to B. So you see I went from 39 to 9, and then I went from 21 to 51. That's seen here on the graph. Um, so I went from 39 down to 9, and I went from 21 up to 51. Okay, let's solve for Q and K. So Q is going to be this guy and this guy. So we're going to take these numbers here we do b over a 51 over 9 5.66 and at equilibrium nice right here we're going to use those numbers 24 over 36 0 0.66 so in this case q is bigger than k so we will shift left Let's see, in this case, A goes to B. Let's look at Le Chatelier's. So we transferred, remember, we took a bunch from A and dumped it into B. So this guy went down, this guy went up. Both of those, right, when something goes down, we shift this way. When something increases, we shift the opposite way. Wait, hold on, what did I just do? Oh, I'm, I'm can you ignore what I just said? Let's try this one more time. I lowered A because I dumped some of it into B. And when I lower the amount of something, we need to go make that up, so I'm gonna shift left. The other thing we did is we dumped that stuff in B, so I increase B, and we're gonna shift then away from the side we increase. So both of those confirm going left. I'm sorry if I confused you there. So Q versus K and Le Chatelier supports that. Okay, one last thought. I'm sorry this is a little longer, but I'm hoping it's helpful. Um, I just want to be super clear about the difference in vocab between when I say that a side is favored um, versus we are going to shift. So when I say something is favored, I, we are at equilibrium. Remember, equilibrium does not mean equal amounts. It means the rate of the forward is equal to the rate of reverse, so you shouldn't see much change, right? We saw a little fluctuation, 35, then 36, then 35, 35, 35, right? That's okay. Um, but mo for the most part, the reactants stayed constant with the reactants and the products stayed constant with the products when you're at equilibrium. And so when I say something's favored, I'm talking about if we say K is bigger than one, and because K is products over reactants, so if I'm bigger than one, that means products are bigger. So the products are favored at equilibrium. So it means at equilibrium, I have more products. If K is less than one, it means the reactants are favored at equilibrium because the bottom of the equation is bigger. So you, when I say something is favored, I'm talking about we are at equilibrium, we are at this point where the forward and the reverse rates are equal. If I'm talking about shifts, you have two choices. This is Q versus K or Le Chatelier's principle. You can kind of explain it both ways depending on what the information provided is. And so remember, if K is less than Q, picture a number line, here's my K, if Q is bigger than K or K is less than Q, we're going to shift left. And if K is bigger than Q, so now Q is down here, we're going to shift right. And what that means is if I say shift left, I mean the reverse reaction is happening until we get back to our K, until we get back to where we were. 
Or if we shift right, the forward reaction is happening, this reaction is happening until we get back to our K where we're at our happy place. Same with Le Chatelier's, right? We're just explaining it more qualitatively with Le Chatelier's. Q versus K is more quantitative. So hopefully that clears up some vocab favored. We're already at equilibrium. Shifting is when we're not at equilibrium. We shift one way or the other to get to equilibrium. I hope this helps clarify the straw lab.